New York City for a special CUBE presentation for HP's Moonshot announcement where they're launching the big game changing product Moonshot where it's changing the game in the data center, low power, high performance, powering cloud, mobile, and social. This is theCUBE, we're extracting the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and Regine Skillern is at theCUBE in the house. Uh, she is the Director of Marketing for Cloud at Intel. Regine, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you've got props, uh, Intel and the Catbird seat and the uh, the HP Moonshot announcement. Congratulations, that's thank great. You. you know, good to see. We, we've been seeing some good innovations today. What do you have with you? Today, I've got the first production, the only production Moonshot, moonshot system that's <laughs> today I've got the only production moonshot sh system that's shipping on the market today. Uh, we've been working for a couple years with HP and developing around this system and developing servers for the system. And uh, we've been talking about it last year, but this product is now shipping. Shipping, um, as you heard this morning, it's shipping in ASMO in Canada and the Americas in Canada, and then it'll be going global next month. We've been seeding it to a number of customers jointly. Nice. Yes, you may. We've been seeding it to a number of customers, customers you've heard from this morning, like Savas and LeaseWeb, and we're getting a lot of good feedback back from our customers. Yeah, so you focused on cloud. Um, the cloud guys must be excited about this announcement. John and I were talking earlier. Would, when people see this, they say, oh, I need some, and they, they have a sense as to where they're going to put it. What are you seeing in your, your constituency base? Yeah, I've been um, following this segment um, for a number of years now and have been really doing a lot of research with our end customers, whether that be hosting providers or web service providers or even enterprise different looking at different applications. And what we've really found is that there is a class of lightweight, wo lightweight workloads that benefit from the lower power the increased density and of course the performance for what this type of system can provide. And we see it working really well for things like static web or we talked a lot about analytics. Batch offline analytics is a great use case. Um, and of course uh, we've had, a, per the, host, uh, the seating I just talked about, we've done seating with the hosting providers because we think it's a good uh, dedicated hosting solution in the low end. Yeah, so anal analytics has come up a, a lot. So you, you see this as a big data platform, right? That's the hot, hot term, hot word. Um, and so, uh, what makes it so applicable for those types of workloads? Well, so what we've found is we've done a lot of work te workload testing. You know, Intel has our own Hadoop distribution, which we launched into the market. We've done a lot of testing, plus a number of our key customers have de deployed Hadoop frameworks and mm -hmm. done a lot of an analytics work. What we found is um, when you do things like the offline and batch analytics, you don't need as much processing power, you need more I.O. and throughput, and that's when this type of system comes in play. We've also seen, though, that there's some nodes like um, the, the data nodes that hold vast amounts of storage, and they might need a lighter weight CPU with it, too. And then you've got your processing nodes that are called the data nodes, um, and you might need more compute power. So what we see when we're looking at analytics implementations and deployments and people who are then moving into real-time dynamic insights uh, gathering from their data, they're doing the ability to mix a range of solutions and having that broad spectrum from the lowest of power and the lowest of performance up to a more com um, com uh, compute intensive system like Xeon, putting those together and having software compatibility across both those environments is really what's going to drive the best TCO for a big data or analytics type deployment. So it's critical that you have both. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of people had ex were somewhat surprised that, that <coughs> Atom was going to be the first instantiation and didn't understand actually there's going to be that cross compatibility. So that's, that's big. Um, and, and, and so talk about how those two coexist. How do you see those worlds sort of, you know, working together? Uh, Working over together. The next five years, let's say. Well, I think the systems are going to evolve. The HP obviously has a broad spectrum of systems in their portfolio, and mm -hmm. although they haven't made any Xeon announcements around the Moonshot system, they have talked about continuing to uh, invest in their Atom lineup, which this is our first. Um, and then this year, we're also going to have um, one based on the Atom processor, which is the next generation Intel Atom silicon. This is based on our 22 nanometer. Um, uh, uh, techno manu manu manufacturing process. And what you're going to see is, you know, increasing that performance and efficiency all with the software compatibility. And then in the future, you know, HP and Intel, we want to continue to collaborate across the range of systems and really right size the hardware and the infrastructure, get application optimized or workload optimized products out 
across the whole spectrum of key applications. So I7s or I5s, would should, in theory, the, should be able to slot in? There are different, I mean, yeah. HP, like I said, has not made announcements in this place, mm -hmm. but what we're really looking at is saying, whether it's for technical computing and need, needing something like a Xeon Phi, really needing a silicon architecture that's been designed for high throughput and performance computing, or whether you need um, Atom, where we're going to continue to take you know lower, lower power levels and increase the performance and efficiency, you're going to have uh, the silicon you need across the range of platforms. Outstanding. So um, a, lot, a lot of people talk about the, the, the four trends, the four big ones, cloud, mobile, social. Not big data. The big fourth. data, right, is kind of the, the fourth. Um, that's sort of the edge, if you will, of the enterprise. Um, is that the way to think about these platforms? Is really that's where they're going to attack first? Um, you mean in the in the cloud space first yes. and then move in? Well, I just think right now there's a lot of different there's different needs based on if you're an enterprise, based on if you're a cloud service provider. When you're building out at hyperscale and you're managing tens if not hundreds of thousands of servers, and especially companies that are service providers where their cost of sales is their data center, that's a very different environment than an enterprise. So it really makes sense that those type class of uh, companies would be taking their workloads and saying, I'm going to find the optimal infrastructure, the optimal platform that's right sized for each of my workloads to drive out every bit of cost and power saving. You mean it's because they're able to, to make money off of their data centers right. as opposed to be a, a pure cost center. Yeah, um, this is how they increase their margin is by driving efficiency. So while the vast majority might be two socket today, it makes a lot of sense that now that we have these types of processors with the Intel Atom processor where we brought it onto the server roadmap, added critical data center features, things like the 64-bit software compatibility so you can move it into your environment without needing to port, um, as well as That's ACC. Huge. Yeah, That's a huge is. feature right there. Um, you can run it today, so you can buy it today, and you can put it in your application environment today. And for those web web workloads we talked about, you know, front end static web or dedicated hosting or simple CDN, great applications to start testing on this pr platform. So talk about the the impact of cloud. Uh, so you you know, we, you know a lot about the data center. We've had been at other events together where we talked about you know what's going on in the future of the data center. And power and cooling is a top conversation, as well as software manageability, mm -hmm. all the stuff that you guys are used to. Intel's not a stranger to the data center. But now with cloud, you have this new new dynamic called Amazon, which is totally leveling mm -hmm. the playing field and forcing everyone's hand to say, hey, you know what? That is a viable option as a resource. Uh, but most enterprises we talk to don't have that comfort in managing Amazon. They're, they're working hard to get there. Um, so where does this fit into this cloud service provider? Because they're advanced from a service standpoint. They mm -hmm. have diversity of services from multi-tenancy to other variety of things. How does this help them? How does this product, this direction of low power, you mentioned Hadoop as a use case. That's a good one, good mm -hmm. one. Is there other use cases that, that you can see with the cloud that where enterprises can get to hyperscale, either by retooling or going to the cloud? Well, yeah, so I think they can do both. Um, we spend a lot of time with enterprises because we think that a private cloud can be built out very cost effectively in its scale. Maybe not the same scale as an Amazon, as you mentioned, because there, you, economies of scale and purchasing are always going to be different. But a lot of the technologies that Intel created first that we delivered out to some of the world's largest cloud service providers, the global leaders, we've trickled them down to, to our product line. Um, and what we want to do is work with uh, companies, whether an enterprise is building out their environment to make sure they have the most efficient infrastructure, and this is where we want to work with HP to position um, appropriately. It may not, like I said, this may not be the platform moving into enterprise immediately today, but everything does move, and um, today this is based on the segments HP's been talking about, more of a service provider move. But what we also want them to do is help service providers be more competitive as they create those cloud services. So the more efficient their infrastructure, the better the service and quality they can provide. Also, we also, Intel, kind of separately from this, we spend a lot of time kind of trying to create technologies that enable service providers to differentiate their technologies and provide additional value. And that's, I think, part of the push-pull, too. <laughs> Not just cost, but value-added differentiation. Yeah, so that leads me to my next question. You talked about earlier about your own Hadoop distribution. We had Boyd Davis on at Strata, mm -hmm. right? He came down from San Francisco right afterwards to be on theCUBE. And so you're doing, obviously, Intel's always done a lot with in the ecosystem and software, but it seems like there's an increased emphasis there uh, lately. What are you doing in this space from a software perspective? How important is software? I mean, obviously, software is important, but what role does it play in terms of 
the adoption of these types of new applications and use cases, mm. and what specifically is Intel doing to foster that? Software is absolutely critical. One of the concepts, and you probably heard Boyd talk about this last time, is looking at the data center as a system. And that means not just your compute network and storage infrastructure, you know, your standard resources, but looking at the orchestration layer and the facilities right. integrated. And one of the things Intel has been reshaping itself and has been making investments for a series of years. I mean, we've bought large software companies and we've been building software internally for many, many years and working with vendors to optimize. But what we're also doing is making sure that as we build out this orchestration layer, as we build out um, the solutions like what Boyd did with the Hadoop distribution, then we're making sure that it takes advantage of what's in the hardware so we can buy not only give a full reference stack that's you know going to work well together and going to be easy to deploy, but we make sure we're getting the most optimized performance out of it. I think you guys hit something on that. I think you know the Hadoop thing, people were asking how come Intel's doing their own thing and not endorsing either Hortonworks or somebody else. <laughs> because of one of these types of implementations where portability is really key, people don't want to throw away their investment, especially IT guys. They have gear, they bought previous stuff. Maybe they can retrofit, but they don't want to throw anything away. So having that application portability mm -hmm. so they don't have to do rewrites is critical. Uh, so that being said, what would you say right now does this disrupt the most of, in a good way? Meaning that, that what, what Moonshot is proposing to do is pretty disruptive. What do you see the disruption areas being that are the positive disruptions for the customers? Well, I think with um, systems like Moonshot, and they talked about that convergence of architecture, which means you're gonna get a lot of efficiency out of it. It's really giving people the opportunity. I think it's more about uh, workload optimized systems, really about challenging one size doesn't fit all, and that we should be looking at individual applications. And when you have a very large Hadoop distribution and you're running complex query, queries and you need a more complex processor, you may need a different system than this, but when you're not, this is going to challenge the economics and drive that lower power, more power efficiency for those uh, certain workloads. So I think it's really about um, when the system works together, yeah. saving costs, and the more money we save, the more money gets invested back into new services, and it's good for all of us. And interoperating with the cloud is critical. Yes. The cloud has to be there. That's obviously an economic advantage. Yeah, and absolutely. And one of the things, you know, we've met before at the Open Data Center Alliance events. One of the things the Open Data Center Alliance focuses on is that open, inter interoperable, flexible solutions where you have VM interoperability and workload portability um, so that you can move if somebody builds something in house or a service provider and, some, and another yeah. customer wants to there move, should there should be some. Yeah, just a quick plug for the Open uh, Data Center Alliance. There's a lot of references, it's a great community they're, they're sharing. Um, you know, it's moving very quickly. It was kind of like a great place for peers, but now with cloud, they're sharing a lot of reference uh, architecture. So it's, uh, we were there with the Cube or Mini Cube uh, Mini last cube. time. Mm -hmm. Just want a quick touch on security. One of the things you guys emphasized in your Hadoop distro announcement mm -hmm. was security. Um, you're in the cloud space, obviously a hot topic. How does the security model change with this type of, of, of architectural approach, or, or does it change? And again, what's Intel's perspective on that? Well, our perspective has been you need security at every layer. You need it within the hardware that's built within your infrastructure resources. You need it connecting your server to your client. You need it within your network. You need security to all layers. Um, so I think this is just another step that when, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of things that companies like HP and Intel continue to do that will help drive security advantages and and moonshot is just part of their system with good management you know they talk about um, all the good ILO capabilities and things that's going to help people manage their infrastructure well excellent all right Regine thanks very much for coming to the cube bringing the props you know <laughs> good luck with the initiative and uh, we'll see you around at other events yeah thank Appreciate you for it. having me all right keep it right there this is uh, siliconangle.com's the cube and we are here in the big apple New York City live at the HP moonshot announcement we'll be right back with our next guest Mark Potter uh, who is the man today, and uh, so keep it right there.